John the Taurus Tour is here getting ready to talk to you, whomever you are watching this, about Medellin versus Cartagena 2024. And I know you're probably saying, ah, well, there's been other YouTubers, many YouTubers who have done videos like this, Medellin versus Cartagena, Cartagena versus Medellin. But the biggest difference between this video and those videos is 2024. So I'm going to be providing you with all the latest and greatest information as it pertains to these two epic cities in the country of Colombia. But I can't do this alone. I can't do this alone and I can't do this by myself. So that's why I have special guests here, longtime friend Miguel Acevedo. He's been to Medellin. He's been to Cartagena. So he's the perfect special guest to have for this showdown. <laughs> Mountains versus ocean. Inland versus coastline. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Medellin, it's Cartagena, it's Right, ladies and gentlemen, to kick off this showdown, we're gonna have the tail of the tape. Where's that? Where's the tail of the tape? There it is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you see it, the tail of the tape. Starting off with Cartagena, founded in 1533. City nicknamed Pearl of the Caribbean. Population over 914,000. People of the city, Costeños. Popular dish, ceviche. Top attraction, the clock tower. Top excursion, the Rosario Islands. Moving on over to Medellin, founded in 1616. City nickname, city of eternal spring. Population over 2,500,000. Mm. People of the city, paisas. Popular dish, bandeja paisa. <laughs> top attraction, Comuna 13. And the top excursion, Cuatape and Peñol. So to kick off the showdown with Medellin versus Cartagena 2024, we're gonna be talking about safety. Let's get that video up on the screen. All right, now, as you can see here, this is Medellin, and I'm somebody who, I always feel safe when I'm in Medellin, right? Safe to say, <laughs> no pun intended. Right. right, I do, Yeah, for sure. I haven't had any concerns with safety in Medellin, uh, which is, some people might find surprising, but, um, you know, we're walking around, it's nighttime, right? Having fun, feeling loose, right? I didn't have any problem with walking around Medellin any time of the day uh, and pretty much anywhere that we've gone. We've gone, at least I've gone, you know, some, some, to, to a bunch of different neighborhoods and areas. So. It might even sound wild, but sometimes I feel even safer walking the streets of Medellin than what I do in Boston. Listen, that's a, that's a conversation that we could have <laughs> another time to get it deeper, but I agree with you there, 100%. I feel safe. I have felt unsafe walking around I mean Boston I'm comfortable because I'm he from here but you know places like Atlanta or Miami and all that I, I did not feel safe in those places in Medellin I did this is probably two or three in the morning mm -hmm. we're, we're wrapping up the nightlife in Medellin yeah. right and you know we're not looking all over our shoulder as you can see not too many people out and and th th right there it just shows you that you're not gonna get attacked, or it doesn't matter whether it's <clears throat> two in the morning or eight in the morning. Right. And this is a nice shot of Comuna 13. This is a uh, place. Yeah, as we mentioned in the tale of the tape, uh, the top attraction. Uh, it's, it's debatable because there's so many top attractions in Medellin, but this this is has definitely become uh, the top attraction, in my opinion. Yeah, that's a huge tourist area. Moving on over to Cartagena. This is the Centro Historico. And it's probably around 5, 6 p.m. You got a nice mixed bag of people, mm -hmm. tourists, locals, vendors. Right. It's busy. I, I could say that walking around Cartagena, um, it, you could tell it's as the guy's dancing in the middle there. You could tell that it's a, it seems like it's a little bit busier. Seems like it could be a little bit more wild because the streets are kind of more compact. It's a small city. Everybody's kind of congregated in one area. But you feel safe at the same time. There's a lot of people that... Um, you know, there's a lot of people watching, you know, yeah. the, the police officers are everywhere and so forth, you know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, score time. As you saw, Medellin, Cartagena, you saw the sights and the sounds, daytime, nighttime. And uh, I'm going to have to give it a tie. I'm going to have to say both of these cities are tied when it comes to safety. 
Yeah, I'll agree with you. It's it's a tough decision, but I think I'd give it a tie as well. They both kind of have their own uh, vibe for sure. Like we were saying, Medellin is, is more open. People are kind of more set on, you know, the city life. Everyone's kind of focused. Um, and Cartagena is a little bit more congested and all that. But with the congestion, you still feel safe with all of the people that work around the area and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You know, they, they, there's a lot of... Um, good you know like interactions with those people and stuff like that so they give you kind of a safe feel you know what i mean a welcoming feel yeah so it's it's tough you know it's tough i'd have to say you tie too right it's tough but it's tied <laughs> all right so we talked about safety right and now we got to talk about where to stay something that has risen uh, as far as the hospitality and accommodation goes is the airbnbs yes out in Medellin and Cartagena. And, you know, the hotels are nice too. Absolutely. I, I like the hotels. You got many, you know, you got, whether it be boutique hotels, mm -hmm. high-end hotels. but There's the, options. Yeah, but the Airbnbs are definitely the way to go when you're yeah. visiting either city. So let's go ahead and roll Absolutely. that footage. Ooh. Airbnb that, that we stayed at in Medellin. And this is, you know, Very a, nice. a nice standard Airbnb. You got here the living room kitchen area makes this balcony you know you got the balcony here you got cable wi-fi you know that's what i love about these airbnbs out yeah. in, in colombia yeah think. they they supply everything you need it's it's i think it i feel like it's a little bit easier to get settled in to be comfortable in the airbnb you can kind of you know do your own thing the hotels will give you a lot but i think this i don't know i feel like i have a little bit more freedom in an, in an airbnb if you compare the price and if you stay at a hotel it's almost the same compared to airbnb but you can yeah. just see right here just you can see all you're getting just look at that closet space yeah the bal the, double the, balcony the, the full balconies. kitchen right Lo big thing for me is the washer and dryer honestly yeah, that, <laughs> that was, plays that a big helpful. pot now moving on over this is a studio apartment in medellin you got the kitchen area look at that view huh yeah you got the nice view of medellin off to the right yeah this is a spot that i stayed at this is in poblado Great location. Everywhere I've stayed with the Airbnbs, they're all great locations for Medellin, especially. You could just literally walk outside and, and you're in the midst of it all. And Medellin, luckily, has a lot of uh, public transportation, easy to get a taxi and stuff like that. Now, moving on over to Cartagena. This is a spot that we stayed at yep. for, for the birthday week of John uh, the Tourist Tours back it's in November. Another another wonderful view. Look at that, huh? Yeah, you got that ocean. You got the Caribbean Ocean right there. Now, this is where I think Cartagena has Medellin beat. Well, like you just said, the, the beautiful ocean view. You know, you step out on the balcony yeah. and, and it's breathtaking. You know, it you is. see that endless Caribbean ocean. Yeah, the nice blue sea. Yeah. It, we got a little bit of uh, the sunset action being over there. Yeah, the suns, the, them sunsets in Cartagena are. Oh, absolutely. Epic. Everything. But again, too, you see all those all those buildings, uh, similar to Medellin, a lot of those buildings are all kind of brand new, you know what I mean? So a lot of these Airbnbs are like, they're like, you know, updated condos, you know what I mean? So they're all, they're all really nice. They offer everything. They got everything you need, you know, hot water, washer and dryer, full kitchen, you know, these places are really nice. Yeah, you got standing showers, and, and that's something you'll tend to notice out in Colombia. A lot of the bathrooms are, are standing showers. You're not going to find many bathtubs. No, it's that's a that's something. I think the bathtubs is an American thing, honestly. Everywhere I've gone, there's not many bathtubs, and if they are, they're kind of separate from the shower. So, you know, you're going to Latin America, don't expect a tub. You know, expect <laughs> a, a standing shower, especially in Latin America. Now, we showed what a, a studio can look like in Medellin. Now, this, oh, yeah. is, this is a studio in Cartagena. Now, just look at this wall right there. Yeah. Look at everything you need. Washer, dryer, refrigerator, microwave. Yep. Great setup. It's and again, these places, they're all modern. Very, very modern. So, you know, like you got the, the nice tile floor and, and it's it's clean. The, the cabinets, plenty of cabinet space. And I mean, I, I dude, I could freaking, I could live there and be, and be happy as hell. Yeah, you can you know? tell the, the Airbnb hosts take pride in, in, in the apartments up right. there. A big one, too, is the air conditions. Even for Medellin, the air conditions, they all have this like those those units, the big units they have in Latin America. It cools off the apartments pretty quick. So, And closing it out with this nice view here. This is actually Laguito. So for those of you who want to go to Cartagena, I recommend for you to stay in Laguito. All right, score time. So you saw it yourself. Many beautiful Airbnbs to choose from. 
in Medellin and Cartagena. You got uh, studio apartments. You got apartments with you know, one bedroom, two bedrooms. So whether you're looking to go out by yourself or with friends, it's you have just endless options when Absolutely. it comes to Airbnbs. But uh, score time and. I, I'm gonna have to give a tie once again. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have to. It's, what do you think? It's tough. Another one that's a tough decision. I can't really weigh onto one side more than the other. I think they both offer a lot. Um, they're both very modern cities. Mm -hmm. People would be surprised by that. Um, all these Airbnbs that are there are very well kept. Um, the hosts are great. The views are great. The mm -hmm. apartments have everything you need. So it's it's tough. It's kind of more of a preference for somebody. I would still give it a tie, but I mm -hmm. think it would be more of a preference for someone. Do you like, you know, the Caribbean or do you like that yep. mountainside kind of city, you know, uh, view and in, in lifestyle, you know? So it's kind of, yeah, it's like which one do I choose, you know? The, the, the vibe that, but, you're, that you're seeking. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You know, but I think both... Um, offer a ton and I wouldn't be able to lean more towards one than the other. Well put. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We're all tied <laughs> over here. So now let's move in to the price levels when it comes to these two cities. So let's go ahead and, and get that video up on the screen. Showing the price levels in Cartagena. So you got hotels, Airbnbs, cost friendly, casual food, drink options, fair. Taxi and transportation, fair. Clubs, bars, and restaurants can be a bit pricey. Well, there's stores, pharmacies, grocery stores, cost-friendly, which I think is generally the, the, the same thing or across Colombia. You don't really run into crazy prices at these stores. Yeah, oh. yeah. fair to say, yeah. Right. Excursion, sightseeing, activities, a bit pricey. All right, moving on over to, to Medellin. Migs, you want to give the rundown yeah, once again? Yeah, we got price levels in Medellin. So running down the same thing here with the hotels, the Airbnbs, cost-friendly. Casual food, drink options, cost friendly. Uh, taxi and transportation, definitely cost friendly. Yeah, for sure. Whether it's a taxi or Ubers, very cost friendly. Clubs, bars, restaurants, still a bit pricey. Um, that can vary depending on where you're at. Stores, pharmacies, grocery stores, again, generally across Colombia is cost friendly. Excursion, sightseeing activities is fair. As you can see right here, in compared to Cartagena, vast majority things to do and you know places to eat and drink and, and whatnot it's it's cost friendly managing is definitely cost friendly on all ends even the bars you know the, some can be a bit pricey but i think you could still find some that are that are fair all right ladies and gentlemen score time so the tiebreaker <laughs> Medellin is taking it yeah Medellin's taking it yeah absolutely i think Medellin takes the lead right now um restaurants and stuff like that like you had it up there it can be pricey in some mm -hmm. places but I think as you go around the city, that it's not always pricey. I think with Cartagena, no matter where you go, with restaurants especially, it can be pricey. Um, they're oh, yeah. kind of pushing that Caribbean thing, you know what I mean, since they're on the water and stuff like that. Yeah. So it definitely the prices definitely jump. I think there's ways <clears throat> to keep the price down in Medellin where you're not able to do in Cartagena. So I definitely say Medellin takes the cake on this one and takes the lead. Very safe to say. Ladies and gentlemen, we're having a lot of fun here on Medellin vs. Cartagena 2024. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. All right, and as we make our way down Calle 10, you know, as I was telling Miguel a few moments ago, right here in this zone, whether you're in Provencia, whether you're in Parque Lleras, right here, wherever you find yourself, you pick your vibe. Whether you want to be in the club mix, the bar mix, whether you want to be with the rappers, with the wild women, it's all here to be found. You pick your vibe and can't nobody stop you. Ain't that right, Miguel? That's absolutely correct. 1,000%. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back on this showdown with Medellin vs. Cartagena 2024. So we talked about the safety. We talked about the Airbnbs. We talked about the price levels. Now, let's talk about something that everybody loves. And, and wherever you go in this world, food and drinks, right? Let's get that, that footage up on the screen. All right, so this is some 
delicious food that you'll find out in the city of Medellin. You, you got the rice mixed with the beans, scrambled oh, eggs, yeah. steak. Yeah. Can't forget the cup of coffee. Ooh. No, look at that. It, unbelievable. Look at how that looks. That's just, I'm starving now just watching this. This is, <laughs> oh. Rice, wow. beans. Throw the egg on the rice. Uh -huh. Chicken breast. Oh, man. Here we go. And now look at this. This is the street food now. And this, this is something that, that's very big out in Medellin. Hey, nothing, nothing, better than, nothing better than street meat, man. <laughs> the long eating hot dogs, man. Oh, all that extra cheese on there, brother. Yes. <laughs> He's loading that up. Why is the rag He's going to pass it to who? Who's he going to pass it to? Oh, yeah. There he is. He's taking my money. Come on. I need to eat this. <laughs> This is, hey. a, this is a Puerto Rican spot that you actually brought me to our Medellin. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Who was, was, wasn't too bad, right? No, what no, it wasn't too yeah. bad. It wasn't like it getting it on the island, but it was, mm -hmm. uh, it was, it was good. It was still good. It was good, a good experience for sure. Look at, I'm excited. Yeah. And, and that's something that I love about Medellin. You'll find, you know, Puerto Rican spot, Peruvian spots. You know. Yeah, there's a diversity for sure yeah. out there. And now moving on over to this a casual spot we found ourselves in yeah. after a, a night of uh, pounding down some adult beverages. The best thing, this place is open like all day long. So Yeah, this is you right know. there on Calle 10. Yes. You know it's good when you got chicken in the beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the rotisserie chicken, french fries, yeah. rice, H2O. <laughs> Can't forget that. <laughs> Oof, aguacate on the side. Yep, some maduro. And this is just to give you a good Ooh, idea. On... There's, there's your little bit of a uh, yeah. little change right there. You get some burger joints. Yeah, and just little uh, bites right here, snack mm -hmm. bites. As, as we said, Medellin has, has many, many food options, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's a big city, dude. A and, big, big city. And you can't forget the dessert. Oh, here we go with the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> now ha let's let's move into a moment of drinks. Now yes. this is this is one of my favorites. This is the whiskey with cranberry juice. Nice shot of the Ooh. of the, the beautiful talk, women. Talking about drinks, or are we still talking about thighs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we <laughs> we talking about the drinks. <laughs> Hey, there we go. Mojito. This is one something. Of my, one of my go-tos right yeah. there. Or oh, what I was drinking that day. A nice little uh, whiskey and ginger ale. Yeah. And just look at that that epic great liquor bar. selection. Yeah. yeah. Great little bar on the side, you know, and with all the options that you can possibly think of. Now moving on over to the coastal city of Cartagena. This was actually... Back in November, birthday week of John the Taurus Taurus, so my, the little, myself. The little bit of a change, you, you got you got uh, you got more seafood. Yeah, oh along yeah. Along the uh, mm -hmm. costeñas, you know. Still got the avocado on the side. Yes, oh, please. Yeah. Always need that, man. Listen, the food is uh, is is unbelievable. Um, you can see me picking at my father's plate there with the uh, and, yeah the seafood <laughs> and the mojito once go. again. Mojito's big for Cartagena, yeah. Gotta yeah. be inside, you know. Whether you're inland or, or, or coastline, mojito yeah, is yeah. always right. a great option. Right? Always. In, especially in Latin America. Always. Here we have, this was, I believe, the T-bone steak with some yeah. sliced potatoes. A little bit of rosemary on the meat. Nice. And what was that? That was the, what did that you That was, it was like a uh, criollo sauce with the shrimp on top of some... Uh, some uh, plantain. Little shot of Pops. Of Pop, Pops. Boy, he, Pops. he couldn't. <laughs> Man, Pops was excited. That that dish was gone. Ah, <laughs> uh, here we go. Some more street meat? Yeah, yeah. So, yes, sir. So, so, you know, we talked about the street food in uh in, <clears throat> in Medellin. And, you know, you can find the street food in Cartagena. Here yeah, you have man, the shish know. kebabs, the corn on the cob. Yeah, they're right alongside with the street meat, man. That looks good. Uh, and here we have... Here we go, John, and the his french fries. <laughs> the chicken breast with the, stacked with the french fries. The, Listen, I'll, you know. I'll, I'll shout out anybody that catches the common theme on John's plates here. <laughs> now that there you go some more seafood you see yeah some red snapper very good very big dish in the caribbean whether you're in the islands or anywhere along the coastline of central or south in uh, south america you're definitely going to see the red snapper yeah and now we move on over to a moment of pictures we, we talked about the the different options in medellin but you have different food options in cartagena as yeah, well this, you know colombian food um it varies depending on the region so you can definitely feel the regional difference when you're along the uh coastline wonderful coconut popsicle right there i'm <laughs> starving now dude we're gonna have to get some food after this <laughs> Hey, now, here we go. Now, let's close it out with a moment of drinks. And once again, with the cranberry juice and whiskey, never fails. I'm going to have to try that. And, and right there in front of where? In front of the, the clock the tower. Clock tower hey, yeah. how you doing? Got the <laughs> margarita here. That that was a fun night. I believe that was a pina colada. A lot of, a lot of good beach. good drinks that you would expect uh, being in the Caribbean, for sure. In Cartagena, you know, you got frozen drinks and, and uh, these fruity drinks and, and whatever this is i don't even remember, I, remember yeah sure you don't but it looks good 
score time once again, ladies and gentlemen. So it's safe to say it's it's gonna be a tie. Ooh. John the Taurus Taurus is slapping the tie when it comes to the food and the drinks in Medellin and Cartagena. What do you think, Miguel? I'll have to agree, unfortunately. Medellin still has the lead, but we're going to go for a tie on this one. Yeah. They both offer amazing food, great drinks. They both have their own uh, you know, twist to it. It's not mm -hmm. just the same food being in Colombia. This It's very regional. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's definitely a, a different twist than being in Cartagena to Medellin, but that doesn't really give the lead to anybody the food's great in both places there's a lot of different options and there's a lot of great food and great drinks yeah yeah yeah. now like medellin has definitely has more options you know being a larger city yeah but 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 still cartagena is right there yeah they don't see that's the thing is with medellin you can find a lot of different options there are a lot of different people that actually live in medellin mm -hmm. um you know there are puerto ricans venezuelans peruvians oh, yeah. and so forth so you know italians you know what i mean there's a lot of people that live in medellin so you can find this food but I think the the twist and the common theme for Cartagena is that it's on the Caribbean and they have the seafood yep. in the good seafood. You know what I mean? And that kind of holds, you know, that kind of lets them level out. And I, I wouldn't be able to kind of give anybody the lead on that one just because of that. So now let's talk about the transportation when it comes to these two cities. Because you can't walk everywhere, right? Right. You, you, there's going to come a point where you, you're going to have to get a taxi you're gonna have to use the local public transportation system so let's go ahead and, and roll that footage all right so kicking it off as we've been doing all along with medellin this is a nice shot of poblado train station very nice and their train system out there in medellin is the metro medellin yes and man that train system runs like water yes it does runs like water <laughs> <laughs> and you can just see it right here. You can see ev everybody in their mama uses this tr train system. It's very busy. Um, I think it's very reliable. It was very safe. And I highly enjoy taking the train in Medellin. I gotta tell you that. The trains out there get packed. You know? Oh, yeah. But one of something that I love is the air condition. It gets packed. But you got that you got that air condition, train carts, it makes the the ride a little more pleasant. I was pleasantly surprised the first time we took the train in Medellin. It was clean. Look at that platform. Clean air condition, like you said, definitely reliable. When we talk about the public transportation, we would be remiss without making mention of the cable cars. That's a part of the Metro Medellin yeah, as well. It is, it's part of their system, it connects a bunch of uh, neighborhoods that are up in the uh, valley there higher up that are tough to get to which is tremendous I think and uh, taking that ride is, is a great experience you get to uh, get like a unique local view of the city um, it is a little bit hotter in those things but it's not, oh, yeah. it's not over it's not overbearing you could deal with it yeah, yeah, the, sure. the ride as you can see going over these little uh, neighborhoods really catches your focus you don't really notice how hot it might be inside those things Again, safe, I think. Uh, I didn't have a problem riding on those, but it was it was a great experience for sure. I loved it. Oh, yeah. Now, moving on over to Cartagena. This is the Trans-Caribbean. Hey, look at that. Now, unlike Medellin, Cartagena doesn't have any train system or any cable no. carts, but they, but they still have the very reliable and very affordable Trans-Caribbean. As you can see, many of the locals wow, use double, this bus system. bus. See, I didn't get I didn't get the ride on the bus. We didn't get around the city that much, but uh, it looks from the looks of it looks nice from what you've told me. Yeah, seems pretty pretty dependable and everything too. So, the bus systems are air conditioned as well. Can't say the same no, for the T in Boston. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's another and, story. And, and that's something that's very vital, especially out there with with that that heat in oh, in, in Cartagena. Yeah, that, that, that Caribbean sun will beat you down. Yeah, yeah that heat can definitely, like you said, beat you down and and, and knock you out. Yep. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, score time. So uh, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to give it a tie. Oh, I'm gonna have to give it a tie. I don't know. You know, this look like tough. Medellin definitely offers more. Yeah. You know, like I said, the trains, the cable carts, the Trans Caribbean puts up a good fight. It puts up a good fight because you got to remember now, this is a smaller city. I mean, we mentioned yeah. we mentioned earlier in the tale of the tape, Medellin, over two million people compared to Cartagena, nine hundred thousand. Right. So you know they're not really gonna need a, a very large and very widespread transit system. Now let's talk about the weather, right? Because that's something that 
especially as a visitor or as a tourist or especially for anybody who's going to be a first time visitor to these two cities it's always good to know what type of weather that you can expect right mm -hmm. so let's go ahead and roll that footage all right kicking it off with medellin and look at this makes beautiful right that's absolutely the mountains the sunshine look at, look at the sun falling behind the mountains medellin is is breathtaking man they call it the city of eternal spring for a reason because it's it's nice all day every day Oh yeah, and you can't forget now that rain, that oh, Medellin man. rain, and like you said, it has that nickname, right. City of Eternal Spring. Well, you need rain to maintain that spring environment. The rain is magical out there, honestly. The city is very green, uh, and that obviously has a role with the rain coming down. It keeps the city green, it keeps it lively and everything, and it, it's, uh, when it rains there, it's tremendous, but I highly enjoy the rain. Ooh, but you can't get wrong with a good beach. <laughs> yeah, moving on over to Cartagena. Look at yeah. the look at the nice shot of the, of, of the ocean there, the sunset. The nice shot right here of the Centro Historico. Oh, that's Perfect. a great time to be walking around the city right there. Sunset, it's nice and cool, cools off. You get that Caribbean breeze. Taking it on back over to the beach. My favorite part of the day is, yep. is sunset time. Yeah, I, I, you know? I gotta agree with you there. And this this is where where Catalina has Medellin beat when it comes to the sunset time. That just that big yellow orange ball of a sun. Some great some great sights on that beach right there. Not just the sun. <laughs> <laughs> lot 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 of sights. A lot of sights and a lot of sound. Some still shots right here. And and like I said, this is where Catalina <clears throat> has Medellin beat with those epic sunsets. Yeah, the sunsets are great. And you can see all the people lined up taking pictures and just take it all in. Uh, being on top of the uh, the old. Uh, city there like the kid the, the old part of the city was great too watching the sun now we mentioned the rain in Medellin and there's rain in, in Cartagena and, and, and the, the rainy seasons usually start around April and they can last until about October November and when the rain moves in it moves in man. and and it caught me by surprise because I remember being on Cartagena last year and experiencing that rainfall for the first time and as you can see here, this is something that Cartagena deals with is flooding. I think they both, I think they both do to their, you know, to their own like kind of extent. Um, it's a little bit different in Medellin when it comes to the water issues. I know they have some mudslides and whatnot, but Cartagena is definitely typical of the Caribbean. When that rain rolls in, it rolls in, it rolls in hard. It comes fast, it goes fast. You know what I mean? So, yeah, definitely in the Caribbean, you can feel it when the weather rolls in. But make no mistake, you're gonna have beautiful sunny days just Absolutely. like that right there. Look at that, that's a great view. Wow, beautiful weather in these two cities, huh? Oh, yeah, everything from sunshine to rainfall, cloudy skies, non cloudy skies, some sunsets, some sunrise. Yeah, them Cartagena sunsets. Wow, mm -hmm. wow. So, score time once again, and hey, I, I know you're. Probably gonna say to yourself whenever you are watching this, like, wow, this is this is what's this a a, a tie fest? <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, it's a soccer match. I'm I'm giving it a tie. I'm giving it a tie. Right. Both cities, right? Uh, yeah, I'd have to agree again. You know, mm -hmm. this is it's a tough one. Mm -hmm. Um, they both offer a lot. I think. You know, the weather in Cartagena. You're in the Caribbean. You got that beautiful caribbean breeze the sunsets the heat you know it's 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 tremendous um in medellin you know it can get a little hot but you for the most part it's nice and cool all the time you do have some breeze um the sun's always out it seems like even when it rains and it's cloudy it's still beautiful oh yeah it's tough to choose mm -hmm. again this would be one where i think i would have to go and say you know it'd be someone's preference whether you like to be out in the sun on the Caribbean side, mm -hmm. ocean side, or if you want that kind of mountainous, mm -hmm. you know, whether I think it would be someone's preference, but I wouldn't be able to give somebody the win. So ladies and gentlemen, we're having a lot of fun here on the showdown with Medellin and Cartagena 2024. We're gonna do a quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right, John the Taurus Taurus, back here in Cartagena after being away for five months. It feels great to be back. I love the energy. It never gets old. I always feel welcome here. I always feel loved here. But this time I'm back with two first timers. 
Long time friend Miguel Acevedo and his pops, Miguel Sr. <laughs> How you guys feeling when we're out here in Cartagena? I feel great. <laughs> Had a great time today and a great night and another night tonight. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. it. We feel yeah. great. There it is. Yo. <laughs> All right, we're back here on Medellin Cartagena 2024. Now, we've covered just about everything, right, when, when it pertains to these two cities in Colombia. But uh, if you want to break from the actual city and you want to do an excursion, well, these two cities definitely have many excursions to choose from. But as we mentioned at the top of the video in the tail of the tape, the top excursions for Cartagena is the Rosario Islands. And the top excursion for Medellin is gonna be Guatapé and Peñol. So now let's go ahead and roll that footage. This is the bus ride en route to, there you see it, El Peñol, the big ass rock right there. <laughs> <laughs> Surrounded by just, look at that. Just oh, yeah, lakes, look at that, different huh? broken up pieces of land. Yeah. The top excursion Beyond the shadow of a doubt, when you're when you're visiting Medellin, Antioquia is definitely a um, a great region of Colombia. It's beautiful and it offers a ton of stuff. And right there, you, you it shows just why. Moving on over to Guatapé, the old town of Guatapé, you got the old balconies, the old street lighting. Beautiful man, look at that! All the colors, the the, the bright colors of the neighborhood, nice cobblestone streets. Oh yeah, it's a great great uh, great feel, good vibe. Very picturesque. Right? Oh, oh yeah, definitely picturesque. I mean, look at that. This, this is great. When you want to go places, this is the type of area people like to walk around. You got a couple restaurants and stuff like that. This is a great, great uh, vacation and little spot right there. And to close out this excursion, what they do now is they bring you to this dock here with many boats, and you hop on a boat. The one that I found myself on, this was a two-floor boat. Take a ride through the lakes right here. Take it all in. Take some pictures, some videos, as you can see in the clip here, as everybody else is doing. Nice. Smell that fresh air out there. And this is an interesting shot right here. This is actually one of Pablo Escobar's old properties. Wow, look at that. Just mm. sitting there abandoned in that beautiful spot along the lake. And I remember being in this boat and just the, the silence. This is just something that you can experience you know when, when you take an excursion out to Peñol and Guatapé it's, it's, it's sites like this he's you know a very controversial mm -hmm. name and you know a lot of people look at him as a hero and other people look at him as a villain but it's, he, he, you know he's he's a, he's a part of the history out there in, in oh, the yeah, city especially around Medellin yeah for sure there's you can't get away from it really you can't escape it but just look at that the, the area it looks like you're in the Caribbean somewhere but you're in the middle of the Andes mountains you know you got palm trees clear water you know what i mean it looks like you know like a like a sandy beach almost but it's you know you're in the middle of the mountains and you know in a lake region you know it kind of gives you a different vibe it's wonderful yeah, very peaceful right moving on over to cartagena you see the clock tower john the tourist tourist found himself in a little speedboat nice look at that look at the uh, all the buildings out there in boca grande you gotta love the ocean man resembles miami now doesn't it yeah absolutely it panama like city you know all these places panama, yeah. san juan even you know you got all san these juan, high yeah. hotel towers and stuff like that that's another one right there now yeah. now this boat as you can see what what a smooth ride smooth ride it is uh in route to calm seas you got that day that's why yeah, 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 true, true. So this boat's en route to uh, quite possibly one of the most top party islands, not just in Cartagena, but in the country of Colombia, and it's called Cholón. And this is where you'll find different tiki bars in the water, and everybody just parks their boats, blast the music, get their drink on, and dance. Look at this, right? Love what was on that boat, but this place is absolutely <laughs> amazing. As it goes for excursions, man, this this like this is tremendous. To be able to go out in the ocean, the Caribbean Ocean, it's it's like a natural pool, waist high. Go out, drink, have fun. You get to meet some new people, have fun, drink some chicas. Yeah, this is uh, somewhere where you got to go. And, and I know you said that you haven't made it out there. Yeah, I mean, this just gives me reason. That's why I want to go back to Cartagena. There's a lot of things that I haven't done, excursions and whatnot. Um, I love doing caribbean side stuff like this this place looks absolutely amazing so it's it's on the uh it's still on the bucket list 
And moving on over to, this is Playa Blanca. Well, typically what you'll do when you find yourself in an excursion on Cartagena, you'll hop on the speedboat and you'll, you'll island hop. And that you saw Chalon a few moments ago. And this is Playa Blanca. This is some, somewhere where you're gonna get brought out to. Beautiful white sand. Yeah, it's a tremendous beach, man. That blue, nearly crystal clear water. Playa Blanca, you can actually drive there from the mainland. But for those of you who don't wanna take the boat. Score time. We've had many ties throughout this showdown, but uh, I don't think this is gonna be one of them. I think this is a moment where we ain't gonna have a tie. Cause yeah. I think you saw it yourself. I think yeah. Cartagena's taking it. Yeah, I mean, I haven't, I haven't been fortunate enough to go on all the excursions that both cities offer, but from other experiences that I've had being in the Caribbean and whatnot, I think that when it comes to excursions, when you can do, you know, catamaran trips around these little islets that are around the mainland and stuff like that, I, you can't really beat that. That's just absolute living right there. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? To be able to jump in the water, the water's warm, the water's mm -hmm. clear. You know, you got. You can hang around people you don't know them, but all of a sudden you do know yeah. them. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> very it's, true. Yeah, it's it's amazing. You know that that's the type of stuff that any, everybody on this planet should experience, and yeah. I think that Cartagena kind of offers that. You know, it has that uniqueness to it, so I think they definitely take the cake on this one. All right, everybody. So we're all tied up here on this showdown, Medellin versus Cartagena, twenty twenty four. But we must have a winner. Absolutely. So. To close it out with this showdown, we're gonna jump into the nightlife. Nightlife, sudden death overtime right now. Yeah, 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 because look, we all love the food, we all love the drinks, we all love the excursions, but nightlife is one of the top attractions where anywhere you go in this life, right? Whether, it doesn't matter whether you're in, in Colombia, whether you're in Brazil, whether you're in the States, you need a nightlife. Yep. So that's what we're gonna hop into next. Absolutely. Let's go ahead and roll that footage. All right, nice shot here of Oof, Parque right. Lleras. And for those of you who ain't familiar with Medellin or, or have yet to go out there or plan to go out there soon, you must, and I mean must, go out to Parque Lleras. It's the center of the universe right here, man. Yeah, you got you got everything out there. You got beautiful women, you, you got vendors, you got bars, yep, clubs, there's, there's tops. Uh, there's like kind of fast food restaurants, there's high price restaurants, but there's the clubs, little bars, mm -hmm. you can hang outside all night. Yeah, and, and, and that's that's what I love, because if you find yourself in Parque Lleras, and you're, if you're not into the club scene, you're not into the bar scene, you can do as everybody is doing right here, just hang just out. Just hang out, man, you yeah. Know, you, you, can, you can go to- People a, watch. Uh, yeah, you, you, you can go to whatever nearby store, get yourself a six pack, uh, have a seat wherever and just take it all in out there in Medellin If whether you're with friends or by yourself, it's not gonna take long for people to come up to you and want to talk to you And see where you're from and see what brought you out there to Medellin as, as I like to call it the Medellin night Okay, yeah, that's too is always it's always on so you can go there on a Tuesday night and oh, I mean, yeah. this video might even be a Wednesday night. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like it's it's that's how it is all the time if you're going somewhere to have some fun, Parqueras, you're gonna have some fun. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, and, and like we said, whether you want the club, you want the bar, or you just want to sit down and have some free entertainment, because there's a lot that goes down out there in Parqueras. Oh, whether we're talking drunk people, to, uh, people watching arguments, me. fights, all of that, people but watching it's, them. it's just all a part of the nightlife, you know? Yeah. It's because you, you you have such a mixed bag of people that it's you're bound to have a free show you know sure. <laughs> this is definitely a little bit of a change here when you go into provenza so provenza mm -hmm. is like right next to parquilleras but it definitely changes this is more you know you still get a lot of clubs and bars more restaurants for sure but you can see there's still people hanging out outside at these restaurants kind of people watching but it's it's a little bit of a different vibe and i think provenza is a tremendous place for nightlife man it's it's always popping there's always entertainment. Look, you got free entertainment out there. These guys playing the Colombian classic music, man. It's good stuff, man. And now this this is another part of town. This is called La Setenta Street 70. Yep, I love. 
this area. This is more of local vibe. You want to get away from the tourism and some of the things that go on around Parqueras and Provenza. You can definitely head over here and have some fun because uh, we definitely did. As it's called, Street 70. So this is where it's all going to go down. This is about a 15, 16 block uh, of just madness. Yeah, this Clubs, was, this bars. Was great. Yeah, great, great vibes in these places, man. Everyone's having fun, all local people. Great vibes in those places. Now moving on over to Cartagena. Here you have the principal entrance to the Centro Historico, the clock tower, the place to go to, much like Parque Lleras in Medellin. The Centro mm -hmm. Historico is, is, is where you want to go when, yeah, when like it comes the, to nightlife. Around the clock tower, kind of like Cartagena's version. I wouldn't say version of Parque Lleras, a little bit different, a little bit kind of calmer, I guess. Yeah. There's, you know, there's, there's rooftop bars nearby, and nightlife nearby, but it's still sort of the center of town, right? Uh, but it's day and night for sure, man. When you're there during the day, great tourist attraction. You're there at night, time to party. Let's go. You know? This just goes to show you right here. Clubs, yeah. rooftops. Yeah, like you said, during the day, more chill, yep. fam family friendly. But yep. but nighttime, once that sun drops. That switch changes, man, for sure. <laughs> it's great. But there's great, great clubs around there, um, I noticed. You know, I know you, you have a lot of experience over there. Some great rooftop bars. Walking through these these uh, little old streets, these old colonial streets of Cartagena, you can find a lot to do. This bars and stuff and whatnot. But you look at all that action going on out there for sure, man. As we mentioned out in Medellin, if, if the, the club, bars, if, if it ain't your thing, you can just hang out as everybody is doing here. Hang out, you know, go to the store, get yourself a six pack, and look at right hey, here. You get some more live music. As everybody's doing right here, Let's you know? Go. And this is all these people right here, you do you think they know each other? Oh. Everybody not, nah, right. right? It's a social scene, you know? Yeah, man. Like look at that. You got people, you got Colombians, you got Americans, you got people from Europe. And everybody has just that one common goal of wanting to get <laughs> wasted and, and, and having, dance the night away. Just having a good time, man. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody just trying to have a good time underneath that clock tower throwing shit. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Great times right there. And uh, this is uh, Hesemini, a couple blocks down the street from the Centro Historico. I mean, Hesemini is still, you know, part of the Centro Historico, but it's, it's a, a different yeah, a little, neighborhood. A little, bit of, a little bit of a walk away. I mean, you know, it takes me, what, like maybe like 10 minutes to get over there? Yeah, about 10 minutes. You're walking, this is, also has a different vibe once you get over there. There's a lot of cool bars over there, I guess. Yeah. A lot of cool bars. You got live music, live salsa. We, I went into a live salsa spot. Different vibe, but it, it, there's a lot of fun going on down there, too. Yeah, and, and again, if you just want to hang out, and, and like as hey. John the Taurus Taurus is doing right margarita. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was probably like my, my third yeah. one. A couple of buttons undone, you know, he's having fun. <laughs> Flags in the background, people walking around, that's good stuff right here, man. <laughs> I think I think I want to head back. Right. I think I want to head back. It makes me want to have a margarita. <laughs> Look at that, huh? Yeah. And everybody just enjoying, as I said, Medellin nights, but hey. I, it, same, same applies to Cartagena, the, them Cartagena nights. For sure, man. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you saw it yourself. Both cities have a lot to offer when it comes to nightlife. Bars, restaurants, rooftops. Clubs. Clubs, outdoor seating. Yep. You know, uh, you, you can you can meet, fellow, well, speaking of, for us, you can meet fellow Americans, you can fellow tourists, fellow visitors. Everybody. You can, walks, uh, all walks of life we yeah, met out there. Yeah, all walks of life. You know, young, old, you mm -hmm. got happy people, crazy people, lunatics. You, know, <laughs> you got it all. You got it all. Whether you find yourself in Medellin, in Parque Lleras, mm -hmm. in La Setenta, or up in Cartagena, in the Centro Historico, Yosemite, like you said, Mix, all walks of life. For sure. So, score time. We're all tied up. It's six to six. Who takes it, Migs? And and I know I've been giving the score all along, but I'm going to leave this. I'm going to leave this in your hands. All right, all right. Listen. Who so takes it? The tiebreaker, as they say in baseball, the rubber match, is going to have to go to Medellin. Mm. Medellin is just next level yeah. nightlife. Yeah, I agree. Right. Next level nightlife. Cartagena's great, but this is next level nightlife. Yeah. You know, there's so many different things that you can do in Medellin. Mm -hmm. You can find all kinds of nightlife. We haven't even scratched the surface over there. Very true. All right, so Very I true. mean, there's a lot going on over there. It's fun. You have a lot of fun in Medellin. 
and I mean, there's just kind of no contest. As I like to say, stimulation, no, endless man. stimulation. Endless, absolutely endless stimulation for sure. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, the final score of this showdown, Medellin versus Cartagena 2024. Medellin wins seven to six, but there's no losers here, right, Miguel? No losers here. No I, th losers I think we're all winners here. No, we're listen, both those cities are tremendous. Um, you know, they both offer a lot. You know, if you want to have a good time, you want to, you know, enjoy life and have a great vacation or whatever it is you're looking for, I think you could find it in both cities. So there's definitely no loser. As I like to say, there's a lid for every pot. There it is. And I, you know, to just have some closing thoughts, closing words, uh, I'm just happy to have the honor and the privilege to uh, experience these two cities, as I'm, I'm sure the feeling is mutual. Oh, you, absolutely, right? yeah, absolutely. And, you know, like I said, despite the score, despite the final score of seven to six, like I said, both uh, of these cities are winners. Um, both have, like you said, endless options and so many things to offer. Right. And it's a, it's a place that, whether you're a first time visitor or returning mm -hmm. visitor, you're gonna fall in love with it. I guarantee it. Right. Because I, I definitely have. I've yeah. fallen in love with it. And right. you said it, return visitors. So it's like, these are places that you end up wanting to go to multiple times. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a reason why people go to these places multiple times and continue yeah. to go there, you know, and use their vacation time and whatever it is to, yeah. to go down there. You know what I mean? <laughs> or whether so, they just drop everything, pack up, and, and, and have an extended down. getaway. Right. Yeah. There's a reason why people do that. <laughs> You know, these places are tremendous. They both offer a, a, a multitude of things to do mm -hmm. and, and, and enjoy. So, yeah. you know. This was Medellin versus Cartagena 2024. Miguel, thank you for being my special guest. And you, whomever you are watching this, thank you for watching. So long, everybody.